What's going on, everybody? Your man, Eric Wilson, in for the Sports Arena. And as I told you yesterday on my social media, I got a special guest. This man needs no introduction, Mr. Mike Florio. Thank you, sir. How are you, man? Good to be with you. Thank you. So uh, definitely, you know, we're here on Radio Row in Arizona. Let's talk about the game. The first question I want to ask you is, you know, you're a guy who kind of looks at things from all perspectives. And I want to focus on the injuries to both the starting quarterbacks. You know, Jalen has the shoulder sprain from his throwing arm. And then, of course, Patrick with the high ankle. You know, the impact it's going to have on these two gentlemen come Sunday. Well, the thing with Jalen's shoulder is we don't know how bad it is. Right. We don't know what kind of pain he's playing with. We don't know what limitations he has or doesn't have because we haven't had him throw every pass he could and see how that reaction is. With Patrick Mahomes, it's more visible. It's more obvious. We know he's struggling with the ankle injury. We know yeah. what he can do with it. And we know that it creates tighter lines that he has to kind of try to stay within as he otherwise works his magic. Now the question is, two weeks removed from the last game for both guys, how much more healing will have happened? Right. I have a feeling we're going to see more mobility out of Mahomes than we did in the AFC Championship because all indications were there was no further damage done. And they've been very transparent about his condition. I thought they would do a little more rope-a-dope before the AFC Championship. When he was walking fine, I thought, oh, that's a ruse because if he's walking fine, why not have him in a boot with a crutch and create the impression he couldn't play. So they've been very open about how he is and where he is. I think he'll be better than he was. With Jalen Hurts, we just don't know how bad that shoulder is, and they're not going to tell us. And so so I, I feel like it's less of a concern for Mahomes. And with Jalen Hurts, just kind of one of those, you watch and you wait and you see if he takes a hit, or is there a throw that he needs to make that he can't. And so I'm a little more concerned about him. And again, with Patrick, what we know is that last play for them to seal the deal and win the AFC Championship game, listen, he took off like a man who was not injured, and even if he was, he darn sure didn't show at that game. So when we look at these defenses, you know, Steve Spagnola, I always say this, he's a guy who knows the NFC East really well. Coach for the Giants, has gone up against the Eagles numerous times. But then again, on the flip side, Jonathan Gannon, a young, I won't say up-and-comer, but a guy who's making definitely making a name for himself. When you look at these two defenses, what stands out to you as far as who might have an edge going into the Super Bowl matchup? Well, first with the Eagles. Right. The reality is you can't cover everybody. You've got 11 players to deploy. Right. And somebody's going to be open. And the thing about the Chiefs offense this year post Tyree Kill, they've structured it so the ball gets thrown to the open man, regardless of who it is, regardless of who's injured. He trusts everyone. He believes in everyone. Patrick Mahomes will throw it to any of the guys that's out there. Whoever's out there deserves to be out there. Back. How many guys are injured? If you're on the roster, you deserve to be in that spot, and he'll trust you and he'll throw you the ball. And somebody's going to get open, especially if the Eagles bring five. They like to bring five. And the problem is, bringing five. you're not going to get to Mahomes with five. He's better when he has extra blitzers coming at him because it gets somebody open faster. And he's already gotten to the point, and this is what should be scary to everyone who tries to defend him in the future. He's only been a starter for five years. Every rep he takes, every game he plays, puts more information into the supercomputer between his ears that makes it harder to fool him in the future. So, you know, great quarterbacks have a sweet spot that they hit where they still have their physical skills and they've seen everything you can ever show them and they can access right away what they're going to see. So. He can always find his open guy. So I think it's going to be a hell of a challenge to keep someone from popping open before they can get to Patrick Mahomes. On the flip side, that chief defense, I mean, Chris Jones is, just, I, you know, I, that was the one thing. Where, God amongst men, if you will. That was, the one, that was the one area where it was too easy to just say the Bengals' offensive line performed better than expected against the Bills, so they'll perform better than expected against the Chiefs. The Bills don't have Chris Jones. <laughs> and, and, and that guy was just obsessed in that game. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I think there's just a collective. And as we get closer to the game, it probably means the Eagles are going to win, but I feel like the Chiefs. Well, I'm glad you said that. Thank you. <laughs> it feels like the Chiefs understand the moment, they understand the legacy that Patrick Mahomes is trying to build. He wants to catch Tom Brady. You gotta get to two before you can get to three. You gotta right. get to three before you can get to four. Right. And he had his chance at two two years ago, and I, I just feel like there's something about the culture of that team, top to bottom, every guy that and I think it spills over from offense to defense with Chris Jones, with Frank Clark, with these young guys that they just plug in and say, Go do your job and they do their job. It's amazing how well that that works. And, yeah. and I, I expect it to continue. Speaking of Mahomes, uh, you know, that is something that I definitely wanted to bring up and talk to you about. The fact that 
we are now seeing two African-American quarterbacks play on the biggest stage in the biggest game and just how the NFL has really evolved and kind of progressed. Talk to me about just that impact and what it's saying to, you know, not only communities, but young black men. Well, it's amazing it took this long. I agree. And I feel like we say that too often. We do. Why did it take this long? Right. Um, and I hope that I always struggle with something like that because I'd like to have the attitude that it's not news. It shouldn't matter. You're right. right. It shouldn't matter. But still, there's a first time for everything, so it's a first, and it's mentioned and it's an issue and it's and it reminds us of how far the NFL has come. I think college football has a lot to do with it as well because college is the ultimate gatekeeper for who plays what position and who thrives at what position and I think as we've seen college football evolve toward realizing we've got special athletes that can do a lot of different things and we're not going to try to jam square peg in a round hole. We're going to let guys do what they do best because it's a problem for defenses. And the NFL within the past 10 to 20 years has embraced the idea of we're not going to be tied to our system on offense. We're going to take what this player does, whoever it is, whatever skill set is, we're going to construct an offense to suit him. Oh, and by the way, that opens up a universe because the traditional pro-style quarterback, you know, the guy who does the five-step drop, three-step drop, and has great mechanics, and stands in the pocket, and throws from the pocket, and doesn't run, and it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The best, quarter, that. the best quarterbacks yeah. now yes. are the ones who can run the play that you've called, and then if the play that you called goes to hell, they can make up another play on their own with their legs, whether it's buy more time to throw, True. or whether it's just take off. So I think that, and, and it's funny because I have debates with folks in this context as it relates to the NFL's ongoing issues with hiring black coaches. Yeah. And it's clearly an issue. And, and people say, well, it's a meritocracy. They're just looking for the best. It's like, well, then why did it take so long for the NFL to embrace the best talent that they have at the quarterback position? There's something else going on there. And we busted through it, and it's over, in my opinion, from the quarterback perspective. And now the next frontier is to apply those same lessons, different context, but like, let's let's make it a true meritocracy across the board, and I think that's one of the big lessons we can take from what's going on here. And the big regret I have, I don't know if you remember Major Harris. I do. This is something that's bothered me for 30 years. Okay. Major Harris was 25 to 30 years ahead of his time, because if he entered the NFL with today's mindset, he would have been a starter, he would have been a star, he would have possibly been a Super Bowl quarterback. He was the most electric player I've ever seen in my life. Now, obviously, you don't know that's going to translate to the NFL level, but he had to have a chance to do it. And what he did at the college level was so incredible, and it was so much the, like the way quarterbacks play today, that back then the NFL just wasn't having any of it. It's just the way it was, and it's unfortunate because he could have had a hell of a yeah. career. I agree. I couldn't agree and with think you of all the, Think of all the great players that we collectively as fans of the game have been robbed of oh my seeing goodness. over so the many. years because of that mindset. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like you said, I always agree, and you know, one of my co-hosts always says, and him and I, you know, we've gone back and forth on this, but the one thing we agree on is we don't care what you look like, we don't care your background, are you the most qualified? That's it. We, we always say, what's that Q word? Are you the most qualified for that position to, to take your team to that level? And that's at any level, it's it, whether it be an athlete, whether it be a coach, whether it be a GM, does not matter. So, Mike, Thank you so much. Great talking to you. I really Real appreciate pleasure. it, man. Thank you. Right. Mr. Mike Florio, y'all already know who this guy is. Your man, Eric Wilson, for the Sports Arena. Hey, we're here on Radio Row. It's going to be a great day, a great week. We'll talk to you guys soon.